Wadi, Wadi, Wadi is the land. We give God all the glory because it's like yesterday, the year 2024 commenced. And to his glory and by his mercies, we are here. In 12 hours time, the first half of the year would have been concluded. There have been various dimensions of afflictions for everyone. There have been challenges. There have been adversities. Or God in his infinite mercies and grace has seen all of us and preserved us until now. And our prayer by faith in corporate agreement is that the glory of the latter half of this year will be far greater for every single one of us and members of our families than the first half and than any other six months we have ever lived in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you believe you say better, amen. The theme of today's message, aptly so, aptly so, is that every affliction has an end. Every affliction has an end. And the text is taken from where we read the gospel this morning. The gospel according to Mark chapter 5 and verse 34. Mark chapter 5 and verse 34. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. And these words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we must claim and confess that these words are being spoken to us as well today. That's why it's a text. That's why it's a memory verse. That's why we should be able to say, Lord, my afflictions right now, here as we fellowship, because I put my faith in you, trusting you and no one else, I will go in peace. And that affliction has been healed to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, something people do not understand, or even when they understand, when the challenges and adversities of life are too great, they forget. What is that thing? Life and death lie in the power of what you and I say. When we pay too much attention, give too much credit to our afflictions and our challenges, when we practically worship this afflictions and challenges we are empowering those afflictions and I hope we can appreciate what the Holy Spirit is saying to us Holy Spirit I pray you just amplify this message I'm not speaking of my own Holy Spirit you are speaking through me and I pray you amplify when you give so much attention and credit to your affliction or your adversity you find that it becomes a monster. You're feeding a monster when you allow afflictions to take all of your spiritual energy and your attention. If you want to look at it in the simplest perspective, when you spend all your waking time thinking about the affliction, whatever it may be, or afflictions, if they are many, when you invest all the time you ought to be sleeping, focusing your spiritual and emotional energy on those afflictions, is that person, maybe not you, not I, that person that continues 
in that paradigm, that mindset? Is that person not worshipping the affliction? What is worship? People tell you, I don't worship an idol. People get so engrossed with affliction, the affliction becomes an idol. An idol is not just a carved image. It's anything and everything that takes your attention, your time, your focus. That's why I find it very funny. Sometimes people get to church and you see them fiddling with their phones. I, I, I ask myself, what do you do with all your time outside church? This service started 40 minutes ago. And if Jesus tarries maybe in the next 30, 35 minutes, we will let everybody go with all of God's blessings. What do you even do with your time? So you find that human beings, consciously or unconsciously, worship the wrong things, create the wrong idols. And I pray that nobody amongst us here will be caught up in that mess in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe that, say louder, amen. Nothing should take your focus away from the Lord. Not even any affliction. But let's come to the star of the story. The star of the story. You know, this passage, every time we bring it in the lectionary, these two stories are told together. The story of the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. It's always told concurrently with the story of the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus. He has a name. But you know, the Bible doesn't give a name to the woman with the issue of blood. Her problem, her affliction, gave her name. And that's the way the world is. That's the way the world is. Listen, if you have a near perfect human being, since the star of the story is a woman, let's take a man, a near perfect man that has everything, but has one thing that is imperfect about him. Do you know that the world will prefer to refer to his imperfection than all the things that are perfect about him? That's the way the devil tries to channel human reasoning. May the Lord help us and deliver us because that in itself is an affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. So the lady didn't have a name or her affliction gave her a name. And Jairus had the name, the ruler of the synagogue. Jairus was not the one that needed immediate attention. Who needed the attention? His daughter. And so, when our Lord Jesus Christ was summoned, when he was requested to come, let me not, let's not use someone. They didn't have the authority to summon him. And he hadn't yet given anybody that authority at the time. At the time he wanted to lay down his life, he still said they didn't take his life. He said he laid his life down for his friends and he picked it up when necessary. Amen. When they requested of him, Jairus, he said, please, Lord, master, because he had heard about him. Now, let's look at Jairus a little bit. Ruler of the synagogue. But what did the leaders of the synagogue say about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? He said he had demons. You know, a few weeks back, we listened to God's What did the ruler say? That he wasn't for real. So how could the ruler of the synagogue come to him? Do you know why he came? He had an affliction that the structure of the synagogue his position in the synagogue could not fix or settle or remove his affliction. So he wasn't going to do anything with being a ruler in the synagogue if his daughter would die. Because if his daughter were to die, nobody anywhere was going to find a solution. But he must have heard 
this same Jesus that they were struggling and refusing to accept. He was healing the sick. He was making the blind to see. He was making the lame to walk. He was fixing and removing afflictions from people. So the man said, just like Nicodemus came at night and said, please, I want to hear from you. The man said, his daughter is dying. <laughs> if he's going to suffer afterwards from going after a fake prophet, let the affliction of a sick daughter not befall him. We'll still come back to the story of Jairus and his daughter. We'll wrap it up because the main star of our text is still the woman with the issue of blood. Now let's look at this woman. 12 years. 12 years. Now, I'll ask medical personnel, those who understand human anatomy here, and those who understand the history of medical practice, health practice, was there blood transfusion 1994 years ago? No. So let's get the dates where in 2024 AD, these events were taking place in 31 AD or 32 AD. Because our Lord Jesus Christ's ministry was from 30 AD to 33 AD. He gave his life for you and I in 33 AD, which was 1991 years ago. So, at that time, there was no blood transfusion. So, wrap this around our minds. For 12 years, she was bleeding. The issue of blood was ongoing. But the blood had it run out. <laughs> hey, this God. This awesome God. Who can even understand it? Number two. Bible puts there clearly. I know the Bible didn't talk about any blood transfusion. So we needed to reason around this woman's affliction and learn from it. Bible says clearly she has spent everything she had trying to fix the affliction. Everything. So, if she has spent everything, how was she getting by? How was she feeding? How was she caring for herself? How was she staying alive? How was she paying her bills? Now, there was no blood transfusion 1991 years ago, but I can tell you, 1991 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, there were bills to be paid. Amen? So how was she paying her bills? That's the multi-dimension of her affliction. Number three, she was of the Jewish religion. If we go back to Leviticus, even when women are in their monthly periods, their monthly womenly disposition, they were not accepted to come into the synagogue. So this woman could not have gone to the synagogue for 12 years. So she had no spiritual cover. Hey, this affliction is not getting more complex. But this was the woman. Now, even if we don't go further, because some of them were inferring, some of them have spoken clearly. If we don't go further, it's enough for us doing with the afflictions. And we have to respect that and learn from that. Twelve years, she kept saying, every affliction has an end. She preached that sermon to herself because she wasn't going to the synagogue to hear anyone preach. Listen, 
Also, her family members, a lot of them must have deserted her. The Bible doesn't say that expressly. So she had to motivate herself by putting her faith in God. And it's the same God that woke her up on that day and said, today your affliction is coming to an end. Wave your hands and shout hallelujah. And when God told her your affliction is going to come to an end, the Bible says she had been hearing about Jesus. Well, you don't blame her. How will she go to Jesus and explain her situation? You know, we didn't talk about it, the fact that she must have been stigmatized, ashamed, ridiculed, demonized. So she wasn't going to be able to walk boldly. Even people with greater authority. Zacchaeus had money. Did he not? Was he able to walk up to Jesus? He could have paid the people and said, look, even though he's a short man, take money, go. Uh, you stand on yourself, let me stand on you. Even his money couldn't buy him the attention of our Lord Jesus Christ. He had to climb what? The sycamore tree. So, here was this woman. She could see Jesus was the solution. She knew her official way. If I could touch the hem of his garment, how was she going to do it? And on this day, Jairus created the opportunity. Now, the Bible doesn't say, but I'm sure she must have been watching his movement. If I can just touch, touch, touch like this. And she went for it that day. And she touched. And in the crowd, our Lord Jesus can say, who touched me? Who here touched me? And the disciples said, oh, Master, there are too many people. What's going on? And the woman was terrified. She knew she has, she felt and realized her faith. She said she has stolen something. And she didn't want to be a thief. She came, see. And the Lord said to her, go. Go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. You are healed of your afflictions. It's a powerful story. Very powerful story. I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody here. I know he's speaking to me. You may be going through an affliction that has lasted too long. Too long by your own estimation. It could be multi-dimensional. It could be spiritual. It could be financial. Like this woman, it could also be a health issue. And you've received all kinds of doctor's reports. And you're tired to your bone of reading those doctor's reports. You would have preferred to hear some doctors say, all the others were wrong. It could also be in relationships. Lord bless you. I was speaking to somebody at a time, and he said to me that he had not spoken to his son over three years. Now, I don't know about you, but that's heavy affliction. For those of us who have the grace to be in touch with our sons and members of our families, to stay three years, and he didn't have a clear idea as to when you speak with him. These are dimensions of afflictions. But what does the Bible say? This lady did not look at the circumstances around her and allow herself to be overcome. She put her faith and trust in the Lord. That's why the hymn we sang, trust in you, Lord Jesus, trust in only you. See, God can use anybody to fix our affliction. Amen? But what he needs from us as the seed that will trigger, the trigger and bring about the complete solution of our affliction, what he needs from us at any given time is for us to have faith and trust in him. Apostle Paul, in writing to the church in Corinth, 
1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, there remain three very great virtues. What are they? Faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. Now, when you use a superlative like greatest, it means that faith is great, is it not? Hope is very great as well. And the only reason why love is the greatest is because when the parousia takes place, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes a second time and the rapture takes place and all of this, these temporal issues are gone. The only virtue that is going to subsist till eternity is what? Love. What do you need faith for when what you are fighting has occurred? What do you need hope for? <laughs> what are you hoping for? The rapture has taken place. And those who don't make the rapture, God forbid, God forbid. But anyone that doesn't make it is also over. So faith and hope, very great virtues, but they won't be able to do anything for people there. But for now, and until the parousia, like this woman, we can bring our afflictions to him. And you know the beauty? For this woman, she needed to hide and find a chance to touch the hem of his garment. But for us today, especially if you live in countries where you can worship God freely, for us, we have ample opportunities to connect and receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Because that is what triggers the end of our afflictions, no matter how complex they may be. And you know, when you preach a sermon like this, we must continue to remember in prayer parts of the world where people are still being persecuted for their faith. And we pray that the Lord will strengthen them. Because that's a kind of affliction and it's a message on his own. But for today, for us who have the privilege, if you're out there, whether physically present here, joining us virtually by any of the channels with which we reach people, and you are yet to know Christ as Lord and Savior. You are yet to make peace with God. And I tell you, that's the greatest affliction. Being alienated from God is the greatest affliction. But you know, the theme says, every affliction has an end. The choice is yours. Today can end that affliction. 